Man, what a week it has been for Star Wars fans. We got a lot to talk about. First reactions to Solo. The time period for Jon Favreau's live action television series is finally confirmed. And that Obi-Wan film announcement may be right around the corner. The date is May 15th, 2018. And you're listening to Episode 2 of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. What a piece of junk. stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Star Wars Canon Podcast, Episode 2. Uh, I am your host, Brian Miller. I've got with me Mr. Christopher Stolle. How are you doing today, brother? Oh, I am so excited to be here and start talking 50 Shades Freed. Oh wait, wrong podcast. You next door down, bud. That's next oh, okay. door. That, okay, I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, guys, we got a lot to talk about uh, this week. A lot in the uh, way of Star Wars news. Uh, I mean, seriously, we've got two films released within a six month period now. After we get Solo, we have an upcoming announcement for the next standalone, uh, making the future number of films nine at this point at a minimum. Uh, we've got a new animated series coming from Dave Filoni. We've got a live action series coming from John Favreau. Uh, we've got, I mean, on top, we've got so many books and comics coming out at the same time. Uh, you know, we've we've got a lot to talk about, and uh, I'm starting to wonder if uh, I'm even going to be able to keep up with all of it with the Canon Library. But uh, before we get into all of that, I wanted to take just a minute uh, and let all you know uh, that. Any of you who've been watching for at least the last few weeks have probably noticed the format change. We've gone audio only. Uh, and this podcast, the Star Wars Canon podcast, will be moving to Patreon as of September 1st. Uh, $2 a month. And we're and it's going to be, what, four or five podcasts a month, Chris, depending on the month. Uh, but as far as the YouTube channel is concerned, we'll keep doing the reaction videos, the reviews. Uh, Journal of the Jedi will be making a return once my harvest season uh, is over uh, and we'll keep doing mailbag episodes uh, once uh, September comes around. So make sure to check out the Patreon page there. We'll put the link in the description below uh, and sure appreciate any support you send towards us. Well, while you're while you're busy spending that two dollars a month to listen to uh, the Star Wars Canon podcast, don't forget to run over to the Realm of the Mist pay, uh, Patreon page to be able to hear exclusively Breaking the Fourth Wall, which does star myself and Mr. Brian Miller. Also, uh, a weekly podcast that can be heard exclusively through Patreon. And I, I know I got to revamp the page right now. I got to set up for like ten dollars a month or something like that. That that's for exclusive stuff. I've got to set the lower bar. Really, we'd ask for like a dollar a month. Like anything you could help keep the uh, channel alive. That's that's all we require for you guys to even be able to listen to the podcast and everything else. Uh, beyond that, everything else is just extra gravy. That's true. Yeah, uh, it really does help, and it, it gives us a lot more motivation to uh, to keep this going. So. Uh, Head on over there, and we sure support, uh, sure appreciate any support you can send our way. Look, I've got, I got three kids and seven ex wives. I need the money. I right? come on. <laughs> well, I don't. So uh, here we go. So what do you say we talk some Star Wars now? Get into what we were really here for. What everybody's tuned in for. Uh, the first thing we have on the docket: the solo premiere was last week, and for those of you that have been living under a rock, uh, it it was. So far, the reactions have been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, there's been a couple of little nitpicky things here and there we'll talk about um, as far as pacing for the film goes, which really seems to be the only thing that I've heard as far as negative goes for the film is the first act is a little slow. But, uh, I mean, we've got tweets from Kara Warner from People Magazine. Uh, Kara says, ooh, Star Wars fans, you're in for a friggin' treat. Uh, killer cast, a great adventure, so much fun. Uh, John Campia from the John Campia show says pure, wonderful adventure. Alden is Han Glover is Lando great palate cleanser after heavier. The last Jedi and rogue one, a true summer adventure, not best film of the year or anything, but prepare to have a really good time. And, and the tweets go on and on. Chris, what are your thoughts on these first reactions for the solo film? Well, I, I'm going to I'm going to kind of play the devil's advocate in a lot of the things that, is, that are being said right now. But the first thing I will start off with, with is saying I'm thrilled 
that this didn't tank. I mean, I'm a Star Wars fan. I don't want a Star Wars film to tank. I'm glad it's getting positive reviews. I'm hoping that it's not just a bunch of people, you know, talking up because of how negative The Last Jedi was looked at. And understand, where I'm about to go in the opposite direction for everybody has nothing to do with The Last Jedi. I'm one of the people that actually enjoyed The Last Jedi. But... I am not a person who likes Fast and Furious movies. I'm not a person who likes the heist movies like Ocean's Eleven or, you know, whatever the case may be. Those movies do not interest me. To me, they're brain-dead films. And all I've seen in the trailers, that's what I'm expecting out of Solo. All I'm expecting is Ocean's Eleven set in a galaxy far, far away. I'm expecting Fast and Furious set in a galaxy far, far away. I'm not into that. I have very low expectations for Solo because of that. I think they're brain-dead stupid films. And I don't like the the promotion of criminality. That being said, I used to be a person who talked trash on Alden Ehrenreich all the time, saying he doesn't look like Han. There was other people that were better suited to be a younger Harrison Ford, whatever the case may be. He's won me over with the previews. Now, again, I'm basing all my opinions on previous. I, I was not one of the lucky people to get to go on the red carpet and see the film early. But from the previews, Donald Glover is garbage as Lando Calrissian. I'll say it straight out. I don't care. You can go ahead in the comment sections. Call me a racist and everything. Donald Glover is garbage. He is not Billy D. Williams in any way, shape, or form. Nothing in his mannerisms or his delivery screams Lando Calrissian to me. Maybe it's just the preview sections and they weren't cut right to really showcase Donald. I'm fair enough to say that. But what has been presented to me I don't buy John Campy as uh, Donald Glover is Lando. I think that's I think that's crap, personally. You think so? I mean, look, I, I did notice one thing, and I'm not saying this, that you're one of these people. Don't take this the wrong way, Chris. But I, I did see a lot of people, uh, let's say, you know, well, I've matter of fact, I think it was on John Campy as your review. Uh, well, not his review, his initial thoughts on the film. People were commenting on that. Saying, oh, "Well, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna take his review with a grain of salt because he liked the movie, and you know he liked the Last Jedi and all this stuff. If you're taking it with a grain of salt, why are you looking at the reviews in the first place? Right. To be completely on, why are why are, are you hoping that he just says that it's crap? That's that's all it is. People at this point are wanting reviews to just say the solo film sucks. Unlike you, people are wanting this movie to to tank. They're wanting it to suck, and I I, I can't imagine any Star Wars fan." Any true Star Wars fan wanting a Star Wars movie to tank? Well, the thing is, is there, the, 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 you're, you're talking about particular brain brain dead fans, and let me clarify before I even get into that because I, mm. I, I I will rant on that because again I'm I'm tired of Star Wars fans right now. Um, oh yeah, me too. My statements about not being overly having high expectations for Solo and everything else, I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised. I don't want to walk in and be like, mm, I knew it. I want to walk walk out and go, oh, shit, I was wrong. That's what I want. Maybe that's why my expectations are so low. Maybe that's why I'm seeing the Nick pick things in it because this is, honestly, this is the movie I never asked for. I don't care about Solo's backstory. I know Solo's backstory. I don't mm -hmm. need it. But it's a Star Wars film. I'm going to be there. I want to enjoy it. I want to walk away feeling like I saw a Star Wars film. Mm -hmm. So my grudges and nitpicks on it, I'm hoping I'm absolutely wrong in. And even if I'm not wrong in it, that doesn't mean I want the movie to be bad. I want the movie mm -hmm. to be good. The problem is a lot of these Star Wars fans are hateful of the fact that Lucasfilm was bought by Disney Incorporated. And because yep. it was bought by Disney Incorporated, they think if the movies tank and they're terrible enough and have terrible enough attendance that maybe Disney will sell it back to George Lucas or somebody else. Guess what? That doesn't happen. You know what happens to Star Wars if it tanks? It goes away. Yeah. No more Star Wars whatsoever. What kind of a fan wants to see the thing that they love go away? Well, it's one of those things where if I can't have the Star Wars that I want, nobody can have it. That's the mentality I think everybody has. Uh, not everybody, but a lot of people, a certain sect of fans are having right now. Um, but there was one tweet in particular I wanted to talk about. Um, and I didn't even know about this tweet until last night when we were doing our broadcasts of the Batman games. Richard J. jumped on and said something about uh, there was one uh, tweet uh, from Perry Nemiroff. 
uh, from Collider.com who said, uh, this is her tweet, it says, there's some fun to be had with Solo A Star Wars Story. Aaron Reich was solid and really enjoyed Glover and Waller Bridge as L3, but not convinced we needed a young Han Solo movie. Was really hoping for higher stakes, more energy, and depth. Um, now, th- so far, this tweet stays in line with everything so far. The Alden Ehrenreich pulls off Han Solo. But the but the part of it that really gets me is still not convinced we needed a young Han Solo movie. We don't need any film. There's not a single movie on this planet that we need. We would survive just fine if movies went away completely. You know? So, it, it you can't judge a movie based off saying whether we needed it or not. And and as far as higher stakes go, you really can't have that high of a stake story when you know Han Solo is going to be later, you know, in A New Hope later on down the, the road. You know from this film, Han's not going to die in this movie. Chewie's not going to die in this movie, you know. We know Lando's not going to die in this movie. You know, so it's, you really can't have stakes like that. But Thanks for spoiling it for everybody mo- else. I know. Sorry. Yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> but as far as wanting like more depth and stuff, we got a Star Wars movie with more depth this past December, and nobody liked it. Like, everybody wanted to piss and moan about it because it was too deep for them to understand, apparently. You know, they just wanted a classic Star Wars movie, which 90% of the tweets say this movie is a classic Star Wars film. Balls to bone. And people are still wanting it to tank. I just, I can't understand it for the life okay, of me. Okay, two points on this. Number one, mm-hmm. I respect Perry Man- Nemiroff. I do. I, I respect the whole entire mm-hmm. oh, so Collider crew. So my so next statement may seem like it's a shot on her. It's not. But she's always had that negative opinion. When everybody else screams, hallelujah to the rooftops, it's the greatest thing on the freaking planet, she's mm-hmm. always got to find something that she nitpicks about. So I take right. her criticisms with a grain of salt because a lot mm-hmm. of times she's just voicing the fact of like maybe from a writer's perspective I don't know what she does in her free time besides the you know the podcasting and stuff of that nature um right, right. but maybe she's a writer or something it's like maybe she's one of those people it's like well if I wrote the story I would have done this this and this maybe that's her her point of uh, contention for for certain s- scenarios but I've noticed in a lot mm-hmm. of her reviews she always does that she'll Say, hey, it was good. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. That's what matters. But, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I take that with a with a grain of salt. Again, the yeah. biggest things I'm taking away from it is it's an enjoyable Star Wars film. I'm taking away that Alden Ehrenreich nails the performance, which is really more than anything else what I hope from this. And, right, and it isn't, yeah. it isn't even so much for, for myself because I can care less than me. Han Solo is always and will always be Harrison Ford. But mm-hmm. I know if he doesn't nail this performance, the fan base will rip him to shreds. Oh, they're going to rip him to shreds even if he is good. They, it's bad enough you know, that they I'm do gonna, it if he is good, but yeah. if he actually deserves the criticism... You know what yeah. I mean? If he, it, I, I hate making this comparison because I, I actually, you know, I, I'm one of the apologists for Hayden Christensen. But if he delivered a Hayden mm-hmm. Christensen uh, Attack of the Clones performance as Han Solo, you know, I hate mm-hmm. to say it, but have at him. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, so, but like I said, so though, so far, every single tweet has praised Alden Ehrenreich in his performance. So the, there hasn't, I mean, out of every tweet I've seen, not a single one of them said that he was unbelievable as Han Solo. Look, so look, there's, there's two things that are going to come out of this, uh, from Han Solo. Mm-hmm. Number one, number one, Ron Howard stepped in and fixed that train wreck that Lords and Miller had done to, mm-hmm. to the solo story. So first and foremost, again, I, I know I'm not overly looking forward to the heist, you know, uh, car chase style star Wars film, but mm-hmm. it's a Ron Howard film. When does Ron Howard make bad films? Two, and it was just announced on Facebook, not really Star Wars related, but it is Ron Howard related. And I'm pretty sure what was announced hangs on the fact that Solo does well. Ron Howard's writing Willow 2. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think Willow 2 is going to happen no matter which, how well Solo which, does. Which, by the way, is a Lucasfilm production. and yeah. Yeah, well, no, Willow 2 is still happening. I guarantee you that. It, no matter how Solo is received by the masses once it's released, Willow 2 is happening. I, I, I guarantee that. But, you know, I, I'm i excited for the movie. I can't wait. You know, uh, do we need the story of Han Solo? Not necessarily. Do I want to see it? Yeah, I'd love to see how he got the Falcon. 
You know, I would love to see that Sabat game. Which did you know? One of uh, the Canon Library's followers commented on one of the videos last week and said that uh, Lucasfilm is being sued over the use of the word Sabat. Yeah, I heard the name Sabat for the game. I heard game. that, and it's a bunch of bullshit. Because uh, I'm sorry, it Sabak is. has been used since the 1970s. It was mentioned. It yeah. was mentioned in the, I believe, Splinter of the Mind's Eye first first book it was ever mentioned in. I think it was. I think it was. As a yeah. matter of fact, no, so I, I will. I will correct mm-hmm. myself. The first time Sabak was mentioned was in the uh, George Lucas uh, novel adaptation of A New Hope. Was it? I, say, I don't have. Well, actually, it I do was have that now. Actually, it just was got it mentioned that Han won the Millennium Falcon in a game of Sabak. Well, see, that that's that's bull crap. I, I wasn't planning on that's talking about 19, that, but it just came to mind. That is 1977. Trust me, dude, whoever yeah. is trying to claim that uh, Lucasfilm is, and Disney are being sued over Sabak, they're just sniffing for money. It was around a lot longer than they yep. were. Yep, agreed. That, that I completely agree with you. But anyway, yes, moving please. on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, please. Uh, we've also got a uh, possible... Uh, coming announcement for the next standalone film uh there's a lot of rumors going around right now and usually i dismiss rumors completely until i see something more concrete but the more and more that this gets talked about the more sources start coming out saying that yeah this is actually happening the more it's starting to look like it really is we very well may be getting the announcement for an obi-wan movie coming very very soon probably after the dust i know i know the inevitable ugh the, but once the dust settles after Solo, we'll probably get the official announcement. I guess right now the working title is Joshua Tree, which is a reference to a tree that grows out in the middle of the desert. So, which, I mean, it's kind of a, a, a neat little reference, I guess. But it's set for a December 2020 release, uh, which is interesting because that will be coming up against uh, Avatar 2. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Chris? Uh, right after they ne- uh, these rumors pan out, we'll also hear the release date for the Crow reboot. Look, we've been hearing oh, we've been hearing since Disney bought Lucasfilm. We've been hearing that they're going to do a standalone Obi Wan film. Do I want it to happen? Absolutely. Do I want Ewan McGregor to play Obi Wan? Absolutely. Do I want a film that's kind of a Logan esque uh, Obi Wan in the desert, kind of a Wild for West feel? Absolutely. Do I think it's going to happen? Ask me a year ago, I would have said, "Hell yeah, let's do it." Because of all the rumors, uh, until I actually hear Lucasfilm announce it. I don't care. I I think it's going to happen. I think I think very soon we're going to be getting announcement on uh, an announcement on this, because um, I mean, we've got a, a I mean, there's a, a quote here from making Star Wars. Uh, let, me, let me read you this quote real quick. It says the project is sufficiently along uh, that an art department is now in full pre production mode at Pinewood Studios, England, with ancillary work being carried out at Industrial Light and Magic in London. A number of concept artists, prop modelers, and storyboard artists are working as a team across the two locations on the film, with the group growing in numbers every month. Contracts have also been extended to a number of crew who have worked on various Star Wars films produced at Pinewood under the Disney era to join the production when their work on Episode 9 ends. This will see the Obi-Wan crew grow gradually over the remainder of the year, but primarily from October onwards. Pre-production will continue at Pinewood whilst Episode 9 shoots from this, from this summer through the end of the year, at which point production of the Obi-Wan movie has been scheduled to move on to stages in mid-January 2019 with the main shoot uh, to begin in April of 2019. And that comes straight from making Star Wars, and they're usually about 98% right on what they put out. All right, well, I got one, I got one question. Okay. When, when did ILM move to London? Last I knew, they were in Marin County. They've don't they have branches everywhere though? Hang on. Hmm, I'm sure they they've got to have a branch in London. Hang on, I can Google that real quick. Yeah, why don't you Google that? Because that's the only thing that like red flagged me in listening to that. I mean, I I agree. Making Star Wars is usually pretty right on, and the time the timing sounds about right. That red flagged me because the last I knew, ILM the main studio ILM is, is Marin County, California. You know, uh, basically, Lucasfilm, uh, uh, Skywalker Ranch. No, they have a they have a studio in London. Okay, they do. Yep, uh, they worked on oh. Avengers: Age of Ultron and The Force Awakens. Okay, yep. 
Okay, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. I knew I knew Pine Studios was in London. I didn't mm-hmm. know ILM had a branch out in London. Well, that's what we do. We but, fact check here. We make sure things are correct. No, that, yeah. that that's fine. Like I said, that was the one thing that that, mm-hmm. that red flagged me. Making Star Wars is usually pretty right on with these rumors. I I I, I can't discredit them mm-hmm. because more often than not they're right. But again, I've been hearing these rumors for so long. I can't get myself excited until mm-hmm. Kathleen Kennedy or Pablo Hidalgo or the director of the film, whoever he or she may be, comes out and says, 2020, Obi-Wan. Yeah. Well, they should. Until that happens, I can't get excited That's about That's something it. they need to be announcing pretty soon because how far out, how long ago did we know about the Han Solo film? We knew about that. Well, during Rogue One, well before Rogue One came out, hell, even Celebration during the hype. It, well, yeah, during the hype for Rogue well, One, even, right after, right after Force Awakens it was, came in theaters. Yeah, it was right after Force Awakens, so it was beginning of like 2016. So it's been over. It's two and a half years we've known about Solo, about the Han Solo film coming out, and mm-hmm. and here we are, what a year and a half away from nine, and then we're what two and a half years. We're two and a half years right now away. From if this hypothetically speaking, if this Obi Wan film happens, we're two and a half years away from it right now. Look, I'll put it to you this way: I'm one of those people. I know we got the nostalgia trip for the Force Awakens mm-hmm. and in the trailers and the announcement and the teasers, and then of course uh, Rogue One had to have a long, uh, long introduction and stuff of that nature because it was the first ever standalone film. Now we have the last Jedi polarizing the fan base mm-hmm. in, in some way, shape, or form, where a lot of people are walking away from Star Wars. Solo barely got anything in the way of uh, promotion compared to other Star Wars films, but at the same time, it's like, well, it's Star Wars; it'll sell. But if you really want to grasp the fan base and you bring them back into the uh, into the fold, the ones that 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 fell away because of Last Jedi it fell away because of Rogue One, which I don't understand why anybody would hate Rogue One. Um, but you want to grab those people back, you need to announce freaking Ewan McGregor playing Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. Forget Episode Nine, although Episode Nine is going to be fantastic, and I think a lot of questions that everybody's bitching about is going to get answered. Agreed. But you don't you don't bank on Episode Nine. You grab the one thing everybody's been begging for and you tell them, hey, it's coming. And I, I don't mean like the rumor mills and making right. Star Wars that. And I mean Lucasfilm. Here he is. Here it is. It's happening. And watch the people come back. See, the only thing I... The one thing I can't understand in that is the hypocrisy in, in this statement, this paradoxical statement. You, you have these people saying Disney ruined Star Wars. That's that's the cut and dry fact that they're putting out there, the statement. Disney ruined Star Wars. And then they turn around in the very next breath and say, I want Disney to make an Obi-Wan movie. Well, if Disney ruined Star Wars, why would you want them to, in your opinion, ruin an Obi-Wan movie? All right, let me let me let me let me break it down to people again. Cause I've been saying it so many freaking times and let so many have different in so many freaking different Star Wars podcasts, left, right, and six ways from Sunday. Am I allowed to get a little political in this? Yeah, go for it if you want. I okay. mean I don't want to get too political. I just I want to, you know, Look, okay, yeah. Disney created your fucking childhood, mm-hmm. okay, from Bambi to Cinderella to Toy Story to Big Hero 6 to all of them to Frozen. They created your freaking childhood, okay? Live action-wise, they created Mary Poppins and and, and all the other great uh, live action films that are escaping my head at the exact moment because <laughs> there were so many to freaking say. They created your childhood. Marvel. People are absolutely in love with Marvel. And I'm not talking about the Sony Marvel. I'm not talking Mm -hmm. about the Fox Marvel. I'm talking about Marvel Marvel. The Avengers, Infinity War. That's Disney. Mm -hmm. Okay? You people want to bitch and moan. It's not Disney ruining Star Wars. It's allowing social justice warrior bullshit undertones into the goddamn stories of a living script that is ruining Star Wars. You want that removed, not Disney. Disney just writes a goddamn check. Tell the writers of Star Wars to stop putting political views into a story that is supposed to be... uh, Space fantasy. That's the word I was looking for. I was about to say science fiction fantasy. But space fantasy, space opera. Take that point of view out or at least make it where it's not as polarizing to people that may not share that point of view and let people enjoy the story for what it is because, again, it is a fantasy. It is supposed to take us out of the everyday life. We don't want to be preached to 
whether you agree with the point of view or not, we don't want to be preached to when we pay our hard earned money to get to go see that ticket, our overpriced money to get that ticket. We just want to enjoy the film for two, two and a half hours. I'm not a per- with the last Jedi. The thing that pissed me off the most about it was having social justice warrior crap crammed down my throat during the Canto bite scene and other various parts of the film. But I'm the type of person that I love Star Wars enough. I can ignore it. But that's what's alienating your fan base, not Disney. Disney just writes checks. Shut the hell up and get an education in film if you want to start t- a bitching about film, please. Sorry, go on. You know, I uh, I saw a comment on Facebook uh, this past week talking about uh, it was it was a, essentially a direct response to what you just said. Everybody who's saying what you just said, and it was, well, if you don't want politics in Star Wars, then obviously you haven't been watching Star Wars for the last six films because it's nothing but politics in it. And I'm, and I'm sitting here thinking there's a difference between seeing the politics of the Star Wars galaxy and seeing today's politics projected onto the Star Wars galaxy. They're, they're, you know, and and. And I just, I, I would rather, you know, you, you talk about, you know, trade disputes in the prequels and stuff like that. Nobody gives a damn. Like, seriously, nobody gives a damn about trade disputes. But at the same time, we didn't have trade disputes going on at the exact same time episode one was released. Well, look, in the original, in the original trilogy, Star Wars was essentially anti-authoritarianism. So mm-hmm. it was a sign of the 70s. The prequels, yeah. the things that went on in the prequels were the sign of the 90s, okay? Mm-hmm. And these films are the sign, sign of the new millennium. The, that is absolutely right. There is usually a political undertone. Tone. That's the way George Lucas wrote it. But he didn't jam it down your throat. He didn't turn around and tell you that the Empire was so bad because they were authoritarian. He just said, here's a group of heroes that are against that establishment. You be the judge on which ones you like, not... Having Rose, who was arguably the worst character in Star Wars, turning around and telling you the evils of capitalism. And that you're an evil person if you believe in capitalism or benefit from capitalism in some way. I don't need that. Well, there's a difference between capitalism and warmongering. Right, well, not in the the Star Wars movie. Yeah. Well, no, not in the Star Wars movie, no. But, you know, thinking of an Obi-Wan film, though, what kind of politics could you possibly drop into an Obi-Wan film, though? Like, how could that possibly go south? Yeah. Because, I mean, we've seen we've seen comic issues. Well, we've seen comic issues of Obi-Wan on Tatooine during his time on, you know, between three and four. And he was dealing with, you know, Jabba's sending bounty hunters after him and stuff. You know, I mean, hey, look, I'm, I'm almost convinced we're going to get some form of Jabba the Hutt in the Han Solo film. I'm, I'm convinced. And if it works in that, why could you not see Jabba the Hutt pop up in an Obi-Wan movie on Tatooine? No, that's, you know, something along those lines. And, and really, there's no politics to a crime lord being in charge of a planet. You know what I mean? It's more of a it'd be more of a Godfather esque kind of film. You know what I mean? Which I wouldn't mind seeing Obi-Wan dropped into like a Godfather story as maybe what if they made an Obi-Wan movie and Obi-Wan was the antagonist of the film? Well, that that's kind of what I see with like a, a Logan esque Wild West type story is it, it, to, to even involve Jabba the Hutt into into the story with Obi-Wan is maybe have Obi-Wan inadvertently but on purpose like save somebody from a hit from one of Jabba's bounty hunters. And now Jabba's pissed at the crazy old wither and the uh, wizard in the jungle wastes. I can see that where Obi Wan is the misunderstood antagonist because he riled up all this crap with the uh, with the uh, Jabba's crime syndicate and stuff like that. But the reason I would be against something like uh, Godfather, which although heavy political undertones, um, well that's true, yeah, you know, uh, Godfather was about criminal organization. Obi Wan is not a criminal. He would not get involved in criminal organizations, but I could see a criminal organization having an issue with him because of some sort of action he had taken. Maybe they maybe they were after uh, Owen's uh, uh, moisture farm and he saves the moisture farm because Luke's on it. And of course, Owen, you know, that that brings problems to the moisture farm and Owen blames Ben for it. That's why he's the crazy old wizard. I mean, there's a way there's a way you could tie it in and it makes sense. But, you know. I, I, I'm firmly convinced on that, but as long as I don't see Jason Momoa as Boba Fett, 
Did you see that? Somebody saying that? Yes. <laughs> yes. What is wrong with you people? Look, I like Jason Momoa <laughs> as, as much as the next person. He was a killer Aquaman, okay? And I never thought I'd ever say that in my life, <laughs> that Aquaman would be killer. But he was a killer Aquaman. I love him as Cal Drogo in Game of Thrones. But Boba Fett, no. No, you, Sorry, you, no. You don't know. No, <laughs> Boba Fett, you need to get Tamara Morrison back to play Boba Fett. You, you, you have to. Well, not only do we have an Obi-Wan film possibly coming through the pipeline... But it has finally also been announced. There's been a lot of speculation on this, too, where John Favreau's live action series is going to take place. And it has now been confirmed that it's going to be set seven years after Return of the Jedi. Uh, he's got half a season written so far. Uh, uh, he dropped that at the uh, solo premiere uh, with the Star Wars show. And, and this alone leads me to believe that the uh, Benioff and Weiss films are going to be Old Republic. Because there was a lot of talk whether or not Favreau's series was going to be Old Republic or anything like that. And if his stuff is set seven years after Return of the Jedi, that shifts the odds a little more in favor of the, that series of films being Old Republic. What do you think? Are you a Are you a Game of Thrones fan? Uh, yeah, to a degree, yeah. I, I, I like you, the books. Have, have I've start, seen, I started the series, but I I like the books better so far. Have you seen the Battle of the Bastards episode? or? No. Or the uh, black uh, battle of Blackwater, I don't or think so. uh, or or in the fifth uh, the fifth season, uh, Hard Home. No. If you've seen these battle sequences, to think that anybody other than Benioff and Wise could do a Jedi Sith war is just retarded. <laughs> Absolutely, Benioff and Wise are doing Old Republic. You don't hire guys like that to not have big epic sprawling battles political intrigue and the shift of a uh, of, poli- of uh, galactic political power from the original uh, Sith Empire mm-hmm. to uh, the Republic or vice versa you know however they want to write it but yeah absolutely they're doing the old Republic now I'm thrilled but kind of scared about Favreau being in seven years after Jedi I'm thrilled we're finally going to go into that time frame between Jedi and the Force Awakens but are Luke Han Leia are they going to make even an, uh, Lando are they even going to make a remote appearance and if so who's going to play them I, I don't think they are because it's, they, he's already said that it's focusing on an entirely new set of characters under new circumstances. And he said something about it was going to press the bound or push the boundaries of technological achievement uh, a lot like what he did with his Jungle Book film. Because, you know, that whole film was shot on a, a soundstage with oh, yeah. the, the only real thing in that was Mowgli. Everything else was CG and it looked real. No, I know. So, I know. so I'm, I'm wondering what he means when he's saying he's going to apply that to Star Wars. But, uh, but he, they did say it's going to be uh, all new characters, stuff like that. I mean, sure, you might be able to get, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sebastian Stan to pop in as Luke for an episode. You know, something He like absolutely that. needs to play Luke. Uh, you, you might get, I mean, and you you might not feel too great about this, you might get Alden Ehrenreich popping in as Han Solo. You know, you might get somebody popping in as Leo at some point. I mean, if it's seven years after... Uh, the Battle of Endor, depending on what the show is actually about, you almost have to have Leia in it. Look, I'll be shot being a figurehead for the New Republic. Look, I'll be shot for this, but you put her in a little bit of older makeup. The only person for Leia I could see playing in that that time frame, and not older makeup mm-hmm. in the sense of who replaces Carrie Fisher in Episode Nine. Right, but, you know, for for Favreau, the only person I could see playing uh, older but young Leia, if you will, mm-hmm. Billy Lord put her in some older makeup she's leia's fucking daughter i could see it i really could see it yeah i, I mean it you'd have to put enough makeup on her where she wouldn't look like conics from seven and eight now i did finally see a but, picture of yeah. uh 11 from stranger things with hair and looking and i i could see a very young carrie young fisher, leia yeah. a very very young carrie fisher and if you wanted to tell yeah. a story of alderaan you hire her but for yeah. for that time frame you just Put a little older makeup on her, stuff like that. I would say Billy Lord playing uh, mm-hmm. playing Princess Leia after the Battle of Endor. Uh, Sebastian Stan absolutely is as Luke. We, and the reason I say that is because I know he can act. I already know he can yeah. act. I've seen Winter Soldier. I've seen other films he's been in. And I have not seen anything out of Alden Ehrenreich. All I have is reviews right now to a film that comes out in a couple weeks. 
So I will withhold judgment on a Han Solo seven or seven years after the Battle of Endor until after I see Solo. Then I'll come back and ask me that question. And I'll tell you whether yay or pfft, you know what I mean. So, but yeah, I, I, that's my only fear of it is, okay, I understand we're going to follow a new group of people that may be on another part of the galaxy or, or whatever the case may be, probably battling off the remnants of the, of the, uh, the empire, but you can't not include these characters in some way, shape or form. Well, no, I, I was, you know, you know for the I mean? longest time I've, I've really uh, disregarded the notion of Sebastian Stan playing Luke and I was like, he doesn't look anything like him. And then they started doing the press junkets for infinity war and he was all clean shaven and everything. And once in a while he turned his head just right. And you're like, Holy shit. That looks like young Mark Hamill. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and it finally hit Mark- me and I'm like, Oh my God, he does look like him. Mark Hamill has endorsed Sebastian yeah. Stan to play Mark Hamill. I'm, I'm behind it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely behind Sebastian Stan playing Luke now. So, uh, but we've got that to look forward to, you know, it, I don't know when that's actually set to release. Probably it's, it's probably going to launch with the, uh, Disney streaming service. Cause I figure that's where that's going to be at, which I am going to drop my hard earned credits on that just to make sure I can. Well, again, let me, let me, let me throw something in there for somebody that uh, okay. for a lot of people that may not understand as far as the Disney streaming service, it's going to be cheaper than Netflix. Yeah. Number one, number two, People are like, oh, I'm not going to spend that money just to see Star Wars films that I already own or whatever. Well, first off, the big thing they're going to offer is the fact that it is going to have the the John Favreau t- live action show. Mm-hmm. That should be enough of a selling point. But hey, wait a minute, CBS All Access did uh, did that with uh, Star Trek STD, and look at how garbage that was. You're right, <laughs> but this is Disney. You're going to have all your Marvel films there. You're going to have all your Marvel TV shows there. You're going to have all your Disney movies there. You're going to have all your Disney TV shows there. There's going to be something there you like besides Star Wars. It's going to be worth the price. You're damn right I'm subscribing as soon as they release it. You got kids? <laughs> you got kids? You want a, you want an endless library of Disney movies for your kids to watch? There you go. That's every it. Pixar movie, every Disney movie, everything, man. That's, I mean, and then you've got adults like you and I that are going to be interested in it because of the Star Wars stuff, because of the Marvel stuff, you know, it's, it's, and, and look, I know Comcast is trying to buy Fox up from under Disney right now. I, I, I know that. And you guys better pray to God that doesn't happen. If Disney can get Fox, then we've got the distribution rights to the original Star Wars trilogy mm-hmm. that they can put on the net, on this Netflix esque series, this streaming service also. You know, you better hope Fox doesn't get bought out by Comcast because you'll never see those films again. You'll never see a new Fantastic Four, a uh, good Fantastic Four. You'll never see, you know, we saw a good Doctor Fantastic Doom again. Four? Oh, well, no, I, well, we didn't, but we, you know, we'll I never see we a good Fantastic Four. I think we did. I don't, I don't think the original two deserved the, the, the backlash. Silver Surfer was crap. But anyway. Um, oh, really? Was I thought it, so, yeah. Was it worse than Fan Four Stick? If you say yes, I'll smack you. I will reach no, through this. No, 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 fan four stick. <laughs> Look, I know this is a Star Wars podcast, but I got to, I got to talk, I got to talk about this for a second. There was a, there was a pivotal Dero moment in Fan Four Stick, where the movie was fine for like the first hour, and I was sitting there, I was like, I don't understand why everybody's so upset about this movie. And then like it shot from one frame to the next, and I was like, oh. <laughs> like it was that quick, and there was no going back, and I, I've never seen. I used to clean up train derailments. I used to work for a company called RJ Gorman. Uh, we'd go clean up train derailments. I've never seen a derailment as bad as that. <laughs> <laughs> like it was so bad. But anyway, back to Star Wars. Uh, yeah. So you're feeling pretty good about this this live action series coming. I, I I'm I'm feeling. Good. I would say I'm a, a 75 percent excited because again I'm thrilled that we're going into the the finally the time frame after Jedi. Finally getting there. I'm just curious on how they're going to I'm 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 ca- cautiously optimistic because of the fact I'm I want to know how they're going to handle particular things especially with Harrison no longer wanting to be involved with Star Wars Leia the uh, rest her soul no longer being with us Mark being Mark and <laughs> Mark and Harrison being as old as they are they don't fit that time frame anymore who's going to play these characters and you can't tell me they're not going to make some sort of cameo appearance in some way shape yeah. or form well you, also seven years after Return of the Jedi that's quite a ways after I mean that's that's after the Battle of Jakku mm-hmm. so that's essentially after the death of the Empire also that's when they're rebuilding the, the New Republic at that point mm-hmm. so 
I, I'm I'm interested to see how that goes. Uh, I've got a lot of faith in John Favreau. I everything that he's made so far has just turned to gold. So uh, I'm I'm really excited about that. So that pretty much does it for news in the Star Wars wor- Star Wars world. We're already at 40 minutes, man. I told you this is gonna be a long one tonight. All right. Uh, Let's talk about a little bit of upcoming canon we got coming up this week. Uh, we've got two massive things coming out, uh, and I hope you guys are Poe Dameron fans uh, because on the 15th, well, today, uh, we've got Poe Dameron Volume 4, the TPB, coming out. And on the 16th, at your local comic book store, you can pick up Poe Dameron number 27. And the cool thing I like about Poe Dameron so far, Chris, I don't know if you're, if you're caught up on Poe or not, but it's post Last Jedi now. Like it's it's beyond the events of the Last Jedi. So, uh, what, what do you what are your uh, thoughts on the Poe Dameron series? So I've heard great things about it. I've never read it. Oh, really? I thought you had. No, I've never. I never got into the Poe Dameron comics. Oh. Um, I wasted my time looking, trying desperately to get into things like Doctor Aphra. Um. Okay. You would like Poe. I'm told I would. I'm I don't told know, I, I would like. Poe. I don't know why you don't like. I don't know why you don't like. Aphra, I, I've told you but, why I don't like Aphra. I know. I, I don't understand how you don't like Aphra. What What's there to not understand? She's a comic book character in the Star Wars universe. I don't. I, she she sticks out like a sore thumb to me. I don't mind. And, it. Uh, to each to each I their really own. Don't. But as far as Poe, yeah, Poe has yeah. been one of those comics that just kind of fell by the wayside because of all the other comics I've been concentrating on. Mm-hmm. I just haven't been able to get it. Jen has been reading Poe, and she says it's great. Oh, has she? So. Oh, yeah, no, I have good. access to Poe. I could go back and read Poe. I just haven't yet. Mm-hmm. So the the only the only issues of Poe I never I didn't really care for were like the first three or four, like the first story arc in the series. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. But after that, I feel like the show really found it, or the show, the run really found its uh, stride and and figured out where it wanted to go. And and like I said, now it's post Last Jedi. Uh, some the, one of the last issues I read, it picked up on the Falcon after the Battle of Crate, after it shoots into hyperspace and. You see Poe and Finn and Ray sitting at the Dejaric table on the Falcon, you know, and she's dink- she's tinkering with the broken lightsaber, and and I know this upcoming series is or this next this next issue, this upcoming issue is going to have a little bit of a nugget of Nine Num on the uh, cockpit of the Millennium Falcon with Leia Yay. and Chewie. So so yeah, we're actually getting some Nine Num action. Rear Admiral so. Nine Nub, I'm telling you, it's going yep, to happen. I, I, I'm excited, man. I really am. Because I think the the frames I saw, he walks in and Leia says, you know, oh, hi, Nine. And uh, she's like, if anybody has any right to the co-pilot seat of the Falcon, I'd say you have a right to it also. And he sits down and you see Chewie next to him and they fist bump, <laughs> you know. So I'm 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 so excited for that issue, Poe. I can't wait. <laughs> but that is the only bit of canon coming out this week. Next week, we're going to have quite a bit to talk about as far as upcoming canon because we'll have a film to talk about on top of everything. That's true. Uh, I, I don't know what we'll have to say that we haven't already said on it, but we'll figure it out. We'll get there. Uh, but before we end this show, I want to touch on some questions from you guys, from the listeners of the Star Wars Canon Library and the Star Wars Canon Podcast. We've got five mailbag questions. What do you say we uh, shoot through these real quick and we'll call it a night, Chris? Are we starting with Tina Broche? We are starting with Tina. Uh, I, I'm assuming that's how you say her last name. I, I'm assuming. Broche or Broche, something yeah. like that. Yeah, neither of us are any good with any names, so you guys hear me say that every week, but uh, you're not going to hear any different from Chris. No, you're uh, not. <laughs> so Tina says, Tina says, how do you think people are going to react to the Han Solo film after seeing The Last Jedi? Do you think some of the people who hated The Last Jedi will like Solo or vice versa? People who love The Last Jedi may hate Solo. Thoughts? Um, I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, but I'm sure there's going to be people who hated last Jedi who like solo. And I'm sure there's people who will love last Jedi who hate solo. You know, I'm sure that's going to happen. I just look, uh, I think, I I think it's going to, I think it's going to break along like this. I think the people who hate it last Jedi are going to hate solo to hate solo. These are the same people we, we, we complained about earlier is that the people who hate star Wars, the Disney era, star Wars, just to hate Disney will hate solo because they just hate that it's not it's not the Star Wars they think it should be. Okay? Now, yeah, I do believe that some of the Last Jedi haters may find it find solo refreshing because it's gonna be different. It's gonna be more lighthearted and adventure, like like uh uh John Campia had said in his review. You know, it's gonna be a bre- a breath of fresh air after all the heavy laden stuff we got out of Rogue One and Last Jedi. 
in turn, the people that are enjoying the heavier laden stuff may find this a little, for lack of a better term, kiddish and may dislike it. So I, I like like Brian says, it's going to be hard to really judge until you see the film. But I think you're going to get a little bit of both. And quite honestly, most of the hate you're going to get is going to be from people that just hate Disney Star Wars, period. Oh, I've been saying it for a year. There's going to be people that hate this movie just to hate it. You know, there are people who are saying, you know, and I go back to what I said earlier when we were talking about that, you know, people commenting on reviews saying, oh, well, I'm taking this review with a grain of salt. Well, if you're going to take it with a grain of salt, why are you looking at the review anyway? You're hoping they say something negative about it. That's all they want. They want they, they rush out to see these reviews now so that they can say, told you so, told you this movie was going to suck. And they don't even they don't even, they haven't even seen it. And I guarantee you, 75 percent of the people who say I'm not going to waste my money to go see Solo are going to go see Solo. I'm almost willing to bet money on it because it's Star Wars. They're not going to admit that, but it's going to happen. Oh, yeah, they're going to spend their money to go out and to be able to say, oh, God, this movie's horrible, and then come out on the Internet and in chat rooms and stuff like that. I saw the movie. It's garbage. God, Disney's just Disney's ruining my childhood. Star Wars is gone. But yet you still spent the money to go see a film that you knew you were going to hate from the moment you walked in. Still supported it. Mm-hmm. Still supported it. Yep. So I I just I don't people are going to like what they like. People are going to hate what they like. <laughs> That's what Star Wars fans do. They hate what they love. So, you know, I just I and we'll get to another question here in a minute because I, I completely agree with one of the questions. I'm almost embarrassed to be a Star Wars fan nowadays. You know, because I mean, I've even seen people comment before when I said I was a Star Wars fan. They're like, oh, you're one of those people. I'm like, no, I'm not. I, I love Star Wars. I don't, I don't, you know, I'll call out what's bad, but I'm not going to sit there and trash something I've never seen. I've quoted on I've quoted on numerous occasions. The original trilogy is lightning in the bottle. We will never see it again. That being said, I don't sit there and judge every trilogy and every Star Wars film off of Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi or even A New Hope. They are all all their own separate entity, and they all mesh together to tell one cohesive story. It's a living script. To me, as long as they're still adding to that living script, I'm still interested in what they got to say. Doesn't matter on the scale of 1 to 10 which one falls to me. It's still one big story that I get to not only enjoy myself and have enjoyed my whole entire life, I get to enjoy it with my kids, and hopefully my kids get to enjoy it with their kids. You know, so it goes back to people not wanting to be proven wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, they they're afraid to be wrong. You know, I mean, think about this movie for a second. Lawrence effing Kasdan wrote this thing. Lawrence Kasdan, the same guy that helped write The Empire Strikes Back. And you're going to sit there and tell me and you got Ron Howard directing. You're going to sit there and tell me this movie's crap. The presale tickets are number two presale tickets of the year. Second only to Infinity War. Wait, uh, Lawrence Kasdan is the uh, co-writer of Empire Strikes Back and now is the co-writer of Solo. Think about this a minute. The guy who wanted Solo to die in Empire Strikes Back is writing the Solo film. He didn't want Han to die. He did want he, Han to die. He Watch Han, Empire. Han Solo. Han, he's come out in an interview said Han Solo is his favorite character. He has said that, but also watch his interview in Empire of Dreams, where he said he felt he agreed with George, uh, with Harrison that somebody had to die and it had to happen early in the film. He wanted Solo to make the ultimate sacrifice. Lucas was the one who didn't want Solo to be done. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I will have to go back and look at that. <laughs> I to, even I, quote. I even quote the documentary Empire of Dreams. You can find it on YouTube. Oh yeah, I'll go. I'll go look it up. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, I, I want to see that. Uh, but yeah, I just, Lawrence Kasdan helped write this thing. So I'm, I'm all for this film. But anyway, uh, moving on, we got to get through these pretty quick. Cause I think we've got some severe weather coming my way right now. Uh, I kind of want to be done with this before uh, it gets here. So second question, Jay Radmore. Uh, Jay says, why are people who have not seen solo telling people who have seen the film that their positive reviews don't matter? Why is it every time someone says they like one of the new Star Wars films, people scream that the reviewer is bought out by Disney? I'm almost embarrassed to be a Star Wars fan nowadays because of people like that. What are your thoughts on these people just being haters but claiming to still be Star Wars fans? I know it's pretty much been the running theme throughout the episode so far, but Chris, do you want to take that one first? It's because her mother didn't hug him enough as children. (laughs) 
the plain the plain and simple fact of they're they're it's because everybody was told their opinions matter that's it you know that this is what happens when you give participation trophies in little league okay mm-hmm. plain plain and simple fact is they're going to, is there some reviewers out there that are going to sing praise blow smoke and sing praises to anything disney because they're bought by disney sure i'm not saying there's not but people who are going to hate are just going to hate because they need to hate. They need mm-hmm. to feel like they're important enough to say you're wrong, even though they're still living in their mother's basements, masturbating the uh, old pictures of Britney Spears from Oops, I Did It Again. Look, nobody cares about these people. And I agree with you. I don't I'm not I'm not a person who's ashamed to be a Star Wars fan, but I am ashamed of of Star Wars fans because of these That's actions. It, yeah. I myself I myself am not ashamed to be a Star Wars fan. I proudly say I'm a Star Wars fan because I'm actually a fan of Star Wars. All of Star Wars. That's all that matters to me. And you know what? The only review and as a reviewer on on podcasts and internets and and stuff like that, you know, I'm not a big guy like Cisco and Ebert or even Collider, so you know, I'm who am I to the world? But even as somebody who kind of looks at it as a, through a critical eye, I could sit there and say, what the hell does our review mean to you in any way, shape, or form? Go see the film. Make your own decision. Because at the yeah. end of the day, the only person's review that matters to me is mine. Yeah. And the only review that really should matter to anybody at all is theirs. <laughs> you know? But I just, I know we keep talking about this, but it just, it keeps popping up because it's it's seriously a problem, apparently. We're not the only ones seeing it. You know, uh, you you see these people trolling comment sections, you know, and I can't wait to see what the Rotten Tomato score is going to be for this movie. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what that speaking of trolls four percent. It's going to be four percent on Rotten Tomatoes mm-hmm. before the movie even comes out. I'm willing to bet money that is a four percent before the movie even comes. out. It probably won't be that low, but it'll be something along the, you know, maybe 40 percent with a 90 45 with a 98 percent critic score. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't matter, you know, like that. That's not even a legitimate review site. It's just the one everybody goes to because they can manipulate it to prove their point, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, you can vote multiple times for a movie you haven't even seen. How is that legitimate? That's like CNN of the movie news. Like you can't. You, no, like you go based you. I mean, yeah, look. You don't tune into somebody's review and then discredit their review when they don't say what you want them to say. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's been several movies I was excited to see, and then I I read the, I tune in for the review, and I'm like, oh boy, they didn't like it. That's not good. You know, I'm like, I saw Harloff's initial thoughts of it. He wasn't a fan of Solo at all. You know, but that doesn't temper me. You know, I'm just like, oh wow, he didn't like it. Oh crap. You know, I wonder, I wonder why he didn't, which I have my own reasoning and own thoughts why he didn't like it. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll touch on that later. But, uh, you know, I, you, you don't tune in for a review and then tell the person who's reviewing it that the review doesn't matter when you've already given them that view and the thumbs down button because they didn't agree with what you think when you haven't even seen it yet. You know what I mean? So. Look. Look, just, you want an honest. I, I can't stand look, it. Look, if you need a reviewer to give you an honest review of of any type of Star Wars film or any film in general, tune into Star Wars Canon Library. Tune into Realm of the Mist Entertainment because we're not high paid guys. We're not paid by Disney or anybody. We're fan uh, fa- uh, film fans. We will tell you because we're fans of the film, whether we like it or dislike it. We will tell you our reasons why we liked it or disliked it. We will tell you the mm-hmm. reasons why. We looked at it differently for whatever reason, because we're going to be just we are just like you guys in the sense of we're looking at it from the eyes of the fan base and not the eyes of whatever marketing research uh, uh, ticket sales, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? We're, we're looking at it as we just walked out of the theater, saw the film. This is what we thought of it. Plain and simple. I'm not going to jump on a bandwagon and change my opinion just to get more views. Exactly, but in the reality, the only person's review, the only person's opinion that matters is yours. Go see the film, base your own opinion. Don't judge it before you've even seen it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, question number three this week comes from Mason Steinhall. I think I said that right. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce that. What are some characters and events you would like to see appear in the comics? Personally, I'd love to see more about what Ahsoka was up to between when she left the Jedi Order and 
and when we see her reappear in Rebels. Love everything you're doing. Love the new format. I listened to this week's episode while at work, and it made the morning go faster. Keep it up. Thanks, Mason. I appreciate that. Uh, well, we already kind of know what Ahsoka was up to. Uh, I was about to say, isn't there a novel? Yeah, we've got the novel <laughs> Ahsoka, which is a, it was a pretty good mo- a novel to read. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing some more of what she was up to between that novel and when she popped up in Rebels, especially when she was Fulcrum for the Rebel Alliance and stuff like that. Uh, why? There's one event in particular that I'd like to see in the comics. Chris, you want to go first before I, before I start ranting about this one thing that I haven't seen yet that I'm starting to get worried about? There are two things I'd love to see in the comic series that that really have not been touched on since the extended universe, really, but uh, needs to be addressed. And maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit with uh, Resistance coming and and with John Favreau's thing coming. But uh, I want to see the hunting down of the uh, remnants of the Empire just as much as I want to see the actual hunt down of the rest of the Jedi Order from Order 66. I'd love to see these two things touch base on. Well, we're kind of getting that second one you mentioned, the Jedi in the new Vader run. We're, we're, we're kind of getting touched on that. Every, every issue gets them closer Touch, and closer to another Jedi. Touching, you know? but I, I really, it's, it's not just the hunting down of the Jedi, but the reformation of the Empire. Like, we know, we know that the Empire, you know, just basically reorganized the, the Republic, but watching it spread throughout the galaxy and taking control and hold, and then watching how, like, the regional governors, the Tarkins, and, or not the Tarkins, the Moffs and, and stuff of that nature start strangleholding the people and what they first thought was like the greatest thing because it brought peace back to the galaxy is now strangleholding them. I would love to see that represented, whether it's in comic, whether it's in novel form, whether it's a film, uh, you know, a film or TV series, the same with, like I said, the hunting down of the remnants of the empire, their last desperate struggle after the death of the emperor to hold on. I know we got a little bit of it, bit, bit of it in aftermath. I'm sure we're going to see something in Favreau and and uh, Favreau series and stuff like that. But I really want to see that chase down and destroy the last of the Galactic Empire. No, that'd be that'd be freaking sick to see. There's actually two things I want to see. Uh, one of the I wouldn't mind seeing either of them in the comics, but one of them I want to see in a novel form. Actually, uh, one the thing I want to see in the novel form, I actually want to see Ben Solo's turn. I want to see that. I want to see what actually led the details that led to that. Cause we know that was about, I mean, oh, Luke and Ben were still running around the galaxy together five to six years before force awakens and bloodline. They were still running around. Luke hadn't even started his training temple yet. So we know that that whole, I mean, that was had to have been two or three years before force awakens when Ben turned, you know? So I want to see that. I want to see that event. I'd love to see that in a novel form. Uh, but what I want to see in the comics, and there's one thing, and I keep coming back to this. Uh, in Empire Strikes Back, when Han and Leia are arguing in the hallways of Hoth, Han mentions, well, the the bounty hunter we ran to on Lord Mandel. Mandel changed my mind. I want to see that happen because that has to happen in this Star Wars comic before we get to Empire. It almost has to unless there's a novel somewhere. And it has to happen pretty close to Empire because that's what changes Han's mind and makes him want to leave an Empire. Right. So it's got to happen pretty close. I mean, we've got to get there eventually. But what I want to see is that bounty hunter being Cad Bane. I want to see it be Cad Bane. I want to see it be Cad Bane. But that you know what? That that's two characters I want to see. I want to see uh, get their own comic series in some way, shape, or form. Is I want to see Cad Bane get his own comic. Maybe have his comic be the his point of view of chasing down Solo at Ord Mandel. That would be sick. The other one I want to see. And I'm sorry, he, he came he came from uh, the Clone Wars and appeared in Rebels, and I just fell in love with the character. I know who you're going to say. They do fly. Give me Hondo. Yeah. I H- want a story Hondo of Hondo. Hondo and Naka. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very, I, yeah, hell yeah. Where was it? What did I see? God, now I'm going to have to think about it, because there was something I saw somewhere where they said something about there was a story coming up where Han met Hondo. And I don't oh, really? remember what it was. I do, God, are they doing a? Are they going to be doing a comic run of uh, Young Solo I with don't, uh, with the Solo movie coming out? Because maybe that's where it is. Oh no no no! It's a new book series coming out. It's, oh, a, okay. it's a Millennium Falcon series. That's what it is. There's a new series of novels coming out, a Millennium Falcon series, and every one the stories or every one of the books takes place in a different time period, a different part of the Falcon's life. Okay, like different people owning it and stuff. And one of them, I think, was Han meeting at Hondo. I think is that's what it was. I, I couldn't remember for the life of me 
where I'd seen that. But all I remember was at one point Han's going to meet Hondo. And I'm completely with you. I want a Hondo Anaka five issue run so goddamn bad. I just <laughs> oh, I freaking love Hondo. Uh, like, like you were talking about, they do fly. <laughs> Rebels. It's freaking hilarious. And then in Clone Wars, you had him, you know, uh, whenever he's dropping off supplies to Ahsoka in Clone Wars, and then a blaster bolt flies by his face, he's like, oh, look at the time. And he turns around <laughs> and walks off. Real sl- love Hondo. Absolutely love him. Hondo, the best way I could describe Hondo is, is for people that may, for who, which I can't imagine you'd be listening to this podcast if you don't know. But, <laughs> you know, for people who may not know, think of like a space alien version of Jack Sparrow is really the best way I could describe uh, Hondo. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a cross between Jack Sparrow and kind of Lando. A little bit of a cross. Yeah. Hell yeah. Jesus. God, I would love to see Hondo. God, that'd be great. He's one of the best parts of anything he's ever in. You know, uh, I haven't really cared for him that much in the Star Wars Adventures comics because he's painted more of a villain, a bumbling idiot villain than anything. Right. Uh, but I just I, I, I yeah, I'm with you. If they if they announce tomorrow they're doing a Hondo run, I'm going to. Oh, my God. I'm going to call you and start squealing on the phone like a, like a <laughs> schoolgirl. Oh, my God. So I, I can't wait. Uh, all right. So question number four this Adam week Fisher. comes from Adam Fisher. Uh, and, and Adam says, first, let me say I really like your channel a lot. Uh, a lot of the other channels I found are uh, talking about the new canon. We're comparing it to the old EU. I just wanted a channel that focused solely on the new canon, and I found it here. Uh, thank you, brother. I that means a lot to me. I, that's I'm really, really grateful that you that you found the channel. Uh, he goes on to say, "I know you are a fan of the new canon, but if there was one thing you would remove from it and pretend it never happened, what would it be and why?" Love the channel. You have a loyal subscriber here. Can't wait to see where you go in the future, Chris. You better go first. I already know what you're going to say, and it's don't don't take mine. But you go and well, go first. Well, I gotta take yours because it be, it would be <laughs> my choice too. Just do it. Just get rip the band. Uh, Air to the Jedi needs to go. Ah, <laughs> Air to the Jedi needs to go. Uh, it it it, it they're, they're just aliens masturbating doesn't need to happen. <laughs> well, it, I'm sure it happens in the Star Wars universe, but we don't need to know about it. Plain, plain and simple. Uh, Heir to the Jedi's got to go, but I'll let I'll let Brian reach into uh, Heir to the Jedi because he's the one that hates it more than me. I just thought it was a terrible book. Brian actually has oh, vendetta no, against no, this book. <laughs> it's it's more than a terrible book. It is. Hang on, hang on, Kirsty. Here, you you want to say something about it? Come in here and tell everybody how much I hate Heir to the Jedi. Go ahead. Come you in. absolutely freaking hate that book. <laughs> like like. I, I can't even fathom the freaking words. <laughs> like, I just don't even know how to express it. Like, I, like, I'm an artist. Like, I can't even figure out a way to paint that to express it. Like, there is no way to express that to anyone at all. She, she heard me talking about it in the other room, and all of a sudden I heard the door open, and she come running in and was like, oh, yeah, I got to say something about this. <laughs> no, but my two cents on it yeah, and, and what I would erase from canon it's just midichlorians because that is oh, considered canon because it's in the prequels. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. A good point. That, that, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah Am that's I a good point. Uh, you, well, actually, midichlorians haven't been mentioned anywhere in the new canon after Disney. And technically, it. since uh, the prequel books are not considered canon, and really the prequel tr- is the prequel trilogy canon. The novels. No, the movies. Yeah. Okay, then the midichlorians <laughs> are canon. Yeah, they're canon. Uh, all right, I don't know why the books aren't, but, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, the movies are canon, but the books based on the movies? No, they're not. Well, it's because the books had a bunch of extra stuff in them that aren't canon. With the new novels, everything that's in the book is canon. With okay. those books, everything that... Whatever is in the movie is in the book is canon, but everything other than that... Like, there were certain scenes in the novels that didn't happen in the movies. Those aren't canon, so... Okay, well, besides Heir to the Jedi, can I, can I say Canto Bite? I don't yeah, mean the book. I mean, yeah, no, if you want. I don't yeah. mean the book. I mean everything to do with Canto Bite. Just, just cut it out of Last Jedi. Cut it out of the canon completely. You don't like the fact that there's a casino in Star Wars? I love the fact that there's a casino <laughs> in Star Wars. I hate the fact that everything they did in the casino in Star Wars was garbage. I, I know a lot of people feel that way. I mean, personally, I didn't mind it, but yeah, I give me, can, give I me the same see idea. Where you all come from. Give me the same idea of searching down the code breaker in Moss Eisley's Cantina, and I will be thrilled. As long as you leave what made Canto Bike garbage alone. 
oh my god, can you imagine the outcry of fans if they'd have done that? They'd be like, really? You couldn't come up with something new? We had to go back to Moss Eisley? You okay, know, like, fine. People would have still bitched Bespin. about it. They, oh, to, we had to go back to Bespin. Go you back know, to like, Bespin and have and have Hondo's little pig friend be the, the actual code breaker they were looking for. There you go. I, I just fixed the film. I still feel like the code breaker <laughs> should have been Lando. I still think the code breaker should have been DJ. I think it would have been more fitting if it would, if his betrayal. Oh, if they were actually just was, rolling for him. Yeah, it, his betrayal I think would have made more sense had he actually been the code breaker instead of just some random dude. Can we? I'm not done with this. Can we go back and talk about *Heir to the Jedi* for a minute, please? Because <laughs> yeah, this they, book, get get, uh, get it off your chest, man. <laughs> okay, look, *Heir to the Jedi* was the third novel release in the new canon, uh, and it was the biggest tome of garbage pig shit that I've ever seen in my life. That and he uh, works on a farm. He knows what pig shit looks like. <laughs> it's look. There's stuff in the new canon I don't like. There's there's things that I'm just like, oh god, I wish that wasn't canon. Heir to the Jedi. I was on an entirely different level. That like, look, I don't like the Chewbacca five issue run. I didn't like the C3PO one shot where he got his red arm. I, I didn't like it. You know, I wasn't because you didn't recognize him because I, because <laughs> I didn't recognize him. Uh, but I didn't, I wasn't that big of a fan of the first aftermath book, but you bring up air to the Jedi and I can actually feel my heart. I'm starting to have heart palpitations. Just thinking about it. Like it wants, this book wants to kill me. This book tries to kill me. Chris brought it up earlier. Luke finds an alien masturbating in that book. There's no getting around that. That actually happened. You know, <laughs> That whole book is Luke trying to get laid by a pilot. That's all. Like, it's like, look, we all know the whole thing with Luke and Leia is taboo. But at this point, they didn't know they were brother and sister. And he was putting Leia on the back burner over this smoking hot pilot that showed up. You know what I mean? Like, he was just like, and Le- even Leia got jealous. Leia got jealous. Let me put that. Let me say that one more time. Leia got jealous. His sister got jealous because he was <laughs> infatuated with somebody else. Think about that for a second. That book, I wouldn't wipe my ass with the pages of it in a post-apocalyptic setting. There's no way. I wouldn't burn it to stay warm in the middle of the night. There's there's, there's nothing about that book that I like. No, I'm sorry. I, I See, that that's where he and I... I hate it so freaking much. I just... I, oh, my God. See, that's where he and I differed because of the fact... I, I thought it was a terrible book. I did. But, of course, you know, I don't... I know... I know, uh, uh, Adam, you don't you don't like uh, comparisons to the EU. But uh, I honestly <laughs> feel that, like, Rogue Planet was a worse book than Air to the Jedi. I actually do. But that doesn't mean that this was book was good in any way. And I think the biggest thing that hurts me as opposed to, to Brian is being such a, a huge Luke Skywalker fan, Heir to the Jedi was the first Luke Skywalker book in the new canon. I was so thrilled to see what Luke was doing, and first off, the disappointment that it's not what Luke was doing after Empire, or after Jedi, it was, gee, right after A New Hope, who cares? You know, and then, as he described everything that happened in the book, it was it was just, it, it, there was nothing good about it. I'm sorry, there was nothing. <laughs> Not only that, but like I said, it was the third novel release in the new canon. A New Dawn was, I mean, it was all right to me. I loved Tarkin, and then this thing came along. And I, I, by the time I was halfway through Heir to the Jedi, I think it took me so long to read Lords of the Sith was already out. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it took me that long to read it. And I didn't even want to read Lords of the Sith because of Heir to the Jedi. Because I was like, oh my god, is this seriously what it's going to be like? Jesus. It took me three months to read Heir to the Jedi. Three months. It took me two days to read Lost Stars. Think about that. Think think about that comparison. Lost Stars is the longest canon novel to date. I read it in two days. Heir to the Jedi is one of the shortest three months. Three it's months. It's hard to get through. It really is. <laughs> if I could erase that book off the canon like now, I would take it out back. I don't even know how I would dispose of it because it's not good enough. Anything I can come up with is not good enough on how to dispose of the book. I don't want to give it to somebody and put them through that. (laughs) I don't want to burn it because that's a waste of a match. You know, like I just. Now I'm stuck with this thing that I don't know what to fucking do with. (laughs) You know, (laughs) like part of me doesn't want to erase it because I can't think of any way to get rid of it. I might as well just leave it on the shelf. Like I just I. If I could erase it, to answer your question, Adam, that is the one thing 
That is the one thing I wish to God. And if you'll notice too, here's testament to how bad it is. Every other author that's written a Star Wars book in the new canon has written another Star Wars book in the new canon. Kevin Hearn has not. Kevin Hearn has not written another Star Wars novel since that one came out. I've been farting the whole entire time we've been talking about Heir to the Jedi. I mean, that alone should just tell you how we feel about it. And that is probably still higher quality than what the book is. <laughs> I mean, just, I would pay more money for that than that book. How much more? I need money. Well, however, however much did I pay for the book? <laughs> just visit our At Patreon. At least 20 bucks. <laughs> visit At our least Patreon. 20 bucks. I'll pay you with the book. How's that? Uh, I wouldn't anyway, want to waste. I wouldn't, we got, I wouldn't want to waste the stink of my fart on that book. Oh my god! Oh, right, that's that bad. <laughs> I don't even want to waste time talking about it, but you ask, so I have to tell you. If, it, it, it's it, not so- if nothing else tells you how bad this book is, it has deferred us down to toilet humor. It has. It has. <laughs> it has immatured me. I've regressed in my IQ and my aging and my progression through life. I've regressed. <laughs> I hit an autosave that was way back. You know, six, seven, you know, years ago. Yes, it's only that far back. That's just not real far. But, uh, but you know, the, I say, look, all of this, I've, I've been accused of liking everything that Disney puts out as far as the new canon goes. And that's not true. I don't like everything. If I like it, I like it. If I don't like it, I'm going to tell you. If I don't tell you what I don't like, how are you going to believe me when I tell you I really do like something? You know what I mean? And, and, and Chris is, I'm sure Chris can testify to that also. I hate Dr. Afra. I still like Star Wars comics. Yeah, see, I like Afra though. Matter of fact, I'm like looking for that six inch Black Series figure ever. To be completely honest, I want it. I, th- I think it's awesome. But anyway, we got one question left. Let's get through this final question. We're already over an hour. And uh, the last question is from Dustin Stevens. And this is an interesting question. It's funny because we were actually just talking about this as a group of Realm of the Mist earlier today. Well, last night and today, actually. Uh, with Richard J. Uh, Dustin says, as far as video games are concerned, do you think we could ever see a quote unquote, build your own adventure type game in the future? Maybe in the vein of what telltale does with their games. I'd love to have a choice based star Wars game, even maybe something like Knights of the old Republic games where certain decisions, uh, you made either uh, made you either light side or dark side and affected the outcome of the game. Love your channel. Been following you since the video, on Ray's possible lineage a couple years ago. Thanks for being a follower, Dustin. I do appreciate it. And it's funny. Uh, Kirstie was actually talking about that video earlier uh, the other day because her cat, uh-huh. Shadow, is in that video. He jumped up on the middle of the table while we were in the middle of shooting it, and he just sat there the rest of the <laughs> video. But, uh, but yeah, she, she thought that was funny. But, anyway, uh, we were just talking about Telltale, Chris. Uh, I think we were talking about the Back to the Future uh-huh. Telltale, but we were just talking about them. Um, what do you think? How I mean, how would you how where do you think something like that could fit into, you know, the way they're doing the new canon where everything is canon? How do you think they'd be able to fit in a, a decision making? Well, game? I don't I don't necessarily think it has to necessarily be canon. Uh, again, look at the Battlefronts. I mean, I know Battlefront 2 campaign is is is, uh, is canon, but Battlefront 1, nothing was canon. You know, and stuff of that nature. So, I mean, you can make a non canonical uh, video game uh, for Star Wars and that that's fine. But I think the biggest problem is is outside of like The Walking Dead and a handful of others, the Telltale games are not necessarily all that great. And I don't think it necessarily lends to Star Wars as well. I do like the idea of maybe another Bioware stab at uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I think the best place for Star Wars that you could have it besides the MMO Old Republic, which is still out there, you know, um, the best thing canon or non-canon for an open world experience is maybe give it to Bethesda studios and let them make a fallout slash elder scroll style game with star Wars where you not only can you choose light or dark side pass because they're, they're always famous for, you know, good or bad karma or whatever you do re- re- shapes the rest of the, the world, how it sees you. But you could also choose you, the format of the character you play. Just because you're doing light or dark side does not necessarily mean you have to be Jedi or Sith. You could be a soldier or a smuggler or a bounty hunter or, you know, what whatever the case may be. And let that build your own story from there. I think that would be more exciting than a linear story where it's giving you the illusion of having 
of having uh, control of how how the game goes. But in reality, it's just simply like those old books back in the day. It's like uh, if you want to turn left, turn to page 52. If you want to turn right, turn change to book 63. You know what I mean? It's still written out there. You're still following that linear path. Either way, I think I think there is room for games like that in the Star Wars universe. They don't all have to be just button mashing multiplayers. Mm-hmm. See, I wouldn't. I don't think the Telltale thing really lends itself real well to Star Wars. To be honest, I if if I was gonna have anybody make a Star Wars game and go with me for a second on this, Naughty Dog, who did The Last of Us, who okay, that is something. You could make a truly cinematic game experience and it be linear and make it something great. I, I'm, I mean, I'm dying for anything Star Wars coming out this year, but I'm counting down days for Last of Us Part 2. I cannot wait to get my hands on that freaking game. I'm dying. I mean, how many times I've played the first Last of Us? <laughs> I, I've beat it on grounded mode three times. I, like, I seriously, I cannot stop playing Last of Us. I love it. I would love to see them do something like that. I wouldn't mind seeing choice-based games again. Like you said, like do another Knights of the Old Republic, like take another stab at it and make it like a canon version, a canonical version of it. I'd love that. And, you know, we might actually get something like that down the road once, you know, we start getting to these Benioff and Weiss films, granted that they're Old Republic. Mm-hmm. When we start getting into that era where we're getting those films, that's when you're going to see more material based off of, you know, that time. period. we might see a remake of Knights of the Old Republic. We might see, you know, a reboot of Knights of the Old Republic, you know, a, 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 a KOTOR-esque game, maybe a different story, different characters, but along the same, you know, lines. You know, you know what I'm saying? Something mm-hmm. along those lines. I'd love to see that. Um, but I just, as of right this moment... Like if you were, let's say, I don't know if they, if they, any game, because that the mobile game that came out a few years ago, what was it? Uprising? Star Wars Uprising? Yeah. yeah, Something like that. Something like that. That you create your own character and you make your own decisions in that game. How is that canon? Cause they, cause they said that game was canon. How is that canon? If you are the one making decisions, altering the course of the way things go. <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't played the game, but I guess it takes place. It, 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 the, the decisions you make take place in non-essential to the main story arc. Well, so I played it. I got to like level 26 and gave up on it because okay. it was just repetitive. It was the same thing over and over again, but it took place. It was like during the aftermath trilogy, like during that time period. Okay. But none of it, was ever I mean there were some mentions of what like kind of what was going on in certain systems in the aftermath trilogy but that was about it and they're just like oh except for that one thing that happened you know in that system <laughs> well like how is like what's the and they even took the game off servers you can't even play the game anymore they completely took it off right you know and so I that says a lot about how canon they thought it was. You know what I mean? Well, I think um, I think the biggest thing that Dis- uh, yeah Disney Lucasfilm needs to do and Lucas Arts needs to do, as far as the video mm-hmm. game industry is concerned, is first off get it out of the hands of EA. EA yeah. EA has been screwing up royally for the longest time. Put it in the hands of people that know what they're doing. Be it Bethesda, Bioware, Naughty Dog, uh, Never Saw for God's sake. Give me give me a Star Wars Tony Hawk game. I'd be more happy with it than. <laughs> than what they've been doing uh, as of late. But the, 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 the biggest thing is is that we need more diversity. <laughs> One of the greatest things about the old Star Wars games, the, the, the non-canon stuff, the original Battlefronts, the Knights of the Old Republic, the, uh, hell, the Jedi Outcast, Jedi Outcast Bomb Bad Racing, for God's sake. Uh, oh, man. These were oh. decent games because they were diverse. You had something for everybody, and they took place generally in different areas of Star Wars. Just because we create a Knights of the Old Republic style game doesn't mean it has to be in Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, just because we create a action-adventure game like Bounty Hunter was uh, does not necessarily mean we have to follow Boba Fett. You know what I mean? Um, or that it has to be in the prequel era. You know, we can create they could create these these games and game styles in anywhere in the Star Wars galaxy. And I, I don't know, I'm probably going to get shot for this. But just as much as you said, once Benioff and Weiss's Old Republic comes out, that'll open up for like Knights of the Old Republic. I think the Star Wars gaming industry will skyrocket 
after Ryan Johnson releases his saga. That's true. That's that's entirely possible, actually. I you where, know, we, where we start stepping outside the original Star Wars galaxy is going to open up all new worlds to explore. Yeah. What, what they need to do, instead of just giving the license to one company the way it is right now. Now, see, I'm, I'm not as salty over EA's Battlefront stuff as a lot of people are. I still have fun playing the game. You know, I, the new progression system is great. You know, I'm just a little pissed that it came after I unlocked all the characters. Uh-huh. But, uh, I mean, other than that, I'm, I'm not too salty over it. But what I think they need to do is instead of just leaving it with one company, sell out that license to six or, you know, I want to say six or seven companies, maybe three or four companies, and let them all start making Star Wars games, you know, at different times. You know, this year you start, this year you start. this. That way you get to a point where every year you've got a new Star Wars game coming out with a new format, a new, uh, you know, uh, company making it a new time period, maybe a new story, new characters every year, you know, and it's going to go right along with every year. We're going to be getting a new star Wars movie. You know, we're going to have new TV shows every week. We're going to have new star Wars episodes when the live action thing drops, you know, I mean, we're, we're going to get to a point where I wish they would do the same thing with the video games as they're doing with the comics and the movies and the TV shows. You know what I mean? Like I, I want them to get to the point where they're releasing games on like an annual basis. Well, there's but, something they could do. They could do that they did during the prequel era and during the original trilogy era with the rise of the of the uh, video game industry. You want to test different genres or test different studios to see if they can handle doing a Star Wars film. Start releasing uh, uh, games based on the movies. Yeah. Look at look at how look at how beloved Episode Three video game was. Yeah, it was, I played it the was, crap out of that. Yeah, and it was nowhere near like the original movie, it, like the movie in any way, shape, or form. But it was a fun video mm-hmm. game. Yeah. So make an episode seven, a Rogue One, uh, an episode eight, a solo video game. Mm-hmm. Well, see, you could even look one one of the brilliant things Lucas Arts and Lucasfilm did with Episode Three's marketing and that particular game was that game came out like two weeks before the movie actually did. And the game had movie footage in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they actually, the cutscenes were movie footage. Now, some of that footage was zoomed really far in, so you couldn't see like Padme laying on the landing dock when Anakin and Obi Wan were getting, you know, to to fight. You couldn't see that. It was altered footage, but still put footage in it as like a, pre, let's say episode, let's say hypothetically speaking, episode nine comes out next December, right? Okay. What if in November, they release uh, a game along those lines, right? And it'd be harder to do now with the canon, not canon thing, right? But you could really, or even, you know, a week before the movie comes out, release a game based on the movie with the game footage, with movie footage in it, but like altered footage. So it's not really given too much away and actually put the game out. Kids would love that. I mean, for episode three, I had episode three spoiled for me a month before the movie came out because the novelization dropped a month before the movie came out and then the game dropped two weeks before the movie came out. I had read the book in three days and played the game the second it came out. So I knew what episode three was going to be going into it. But I'm just but saying you, you could, could still do it. I mean, could you imagine? You could do it, yeah. Do you do you remember an original Xbox game called uh, Lord of the Rings of Third Age? Yes, where, I have it. Where you were a group of companions that fought in the War of the Ring. But yep. you didn't fight with the main characters. You were off on your own, kind of in a sense, protecting the main characters. Yeah. So it was a completely separate story that followed linear with the the the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy movie, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Why couldn't we do that with Rogue One? Be a, no, a yeah. squadron, a squadron of yeah. rebels who are protecting Rogue One in some way, shape, or form. Or hell, even even go back to what I was saying a while ago. Before Episode Nine comes out. Like two weeks before the movie comes out, release this game where you're those background characters in episode nine to where when you're going through, you may look off in the distance and see Poe talking to Ray or something Mm -hmm. and then later find out that that's a scene in the movie. You know what I mean? Something along those lines where you actually feel like when you watch the movie, then you're part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like you've been there already. You had something to do with that, you know, stuff like that. Like you said, be diverse. Don't just do linear storytelling. You know, actually do stuff that cycles back around to the movies. Like with with the campaign for Battlefront 2, the Resurrections DLC, Mm -hmm. they introduced the uh, uh, Dreadnoughts on the the blueprints for the Dreadnoughts in that. Right. You know, while they were doing the evacuation of of Dakar. Stuff like that. Do do more (laughs) stuff like that. 
You know, well, the, the, I think the big thing is is not just diversity in company, but diversity in style of game. Again, you know, I don't like you. I don't have a problem with with uh, the first person shooter Battlefront. A lot of people do because they miss the old third person shooter. I don't mind the FPS Battlefront, although give me back Ewok Hunt. <laughs> oh yes, please for the love um, of God. <laughs> That was creepy. That was like evil within creepy, but it was still a great thing to play. But don't just give me first-person shooter Star Wars games. It's time to start delving into the world of the Jedi. It's time to start delving into the world of the scoundrels and the underworld. It's time to start looking into things that are not necessarily following along the lines of stuff we see all the time in the films. Let's start looking at the galaxy of Star Wars. Well, I feel like Lucasfilm's doing that, but they're doing it in kind of a slower way where, look, when when they first bought it, they said, we got new films coming out, right? So they said, we're going to do Star Wars episodes 7, 8, and 9. And then they said, they're going to do these standalone films also. So I feel, And we're still in, let's say, let's just call it what it is, phase one of Lucasfilm's first Disney era. We're in phase one of it right. still. We'll be in phase one of it until, you know, let's say the Obi-Wan movie comes out. Those first six films. After that, I figure Benioff and Weiss and Ryan Johnson's trilogy will kind of be that phase two area. Okay. And then phase three will be, you know, I feel like that this phase one era is just to open us up and get us ready for what phase two is going to be with all these new locations and these new things like what we're talking about right now. New stories, new planets, new characters we've never heard of, you know, new storylines that we've never even heard of, you know, stuff like that. We'll go back and hit Old Republic. Hell, we might travel to the far future where Cade Skywalker is for all we know. You know what I mean? God, like, we God, could, I hope not. Yeah, well, I know, but I'm just saying we could start <laughs> going back and forth. I figure this first phase is just to kind of get us back into the idea of a lot of new Star Wars stuff coming out. You right. know, because we're still saying goodbye to the old as we're introducing the new with this these new films. I think once these this first phase is over and it's all new stuff, it's going to be balls to the wall new stuff. I agree. I, I, I absolutely agree. And I, I hope I basically I'm hoping for a bright future in the Star Wars video game industry because it's time. It is. It's overdue. <laughs> it's way overdue. Yeah. So, well, guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. We're coming up on the hour and a half mark. Uh, Chris, where can they find you at, brother, if they are looking for you on social media or YouTube, brother? Well, right now, in about an hour, you can find me on RadioCastFM.com as I will be raising the underground and shoving all the rock and metal straight up your no-no holes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so make sure you tune in into that. That's 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Monday on RadioCastFM.com. But you can also find me anywhere you find the name Realm of the Mist Entertainment, be it our Patreon page, our SoundCloud page, or our YouTube page. And you guys can find me, obviously, right here on the Star Wars Canon Library. Please keep in mind, guys, that this podcast in September will be moving to the Patreon page. I will put the link below for that. Make sure to check out the Facebook page as well. Richard J is doing a great job of running that, keeping everybody up to date on everything can. And make sure to give us a like and a follow there. If you guys like this podcast, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you really like to hit that subscribe button, we would sure appreciate it. And until next week, this is Brian and Chris signing off. May the force be with you guys.